Welcome to Beyond the Gates. This is Rauda channel. And now I have some, I don't know, nobody here who's giving me a very moist uh, connection here. Sir, let's start by asking this weird question. Everybody already why knows it. Why you lick my head? <laughs> no, no, no. Everybody knows why you're licking my head. It tastes good. It's yeah. vanilla and that sounds strawberry. So, so sexual. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, are we having a moment? No. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Sir, who the hell are you and why are you here? I'm Jeff Becerra. I'm here because I'm a lucky motherfucker. And I got a great man. And I've just been blessed enough to be able to do this shit for a living, you know? Now, those, those who are so young to understand what happened in the early 80s, you might have a very clue here. Now, this is one of my all-time favorite metal logos. Why? Because, first of all, it's just fucking possessed. You really can't go more extreme metal with that kind of a name. And look at the fucking logo. It's iconic. Okay, so, as humble motherfucker as you are, Everybody knows you are legend, living legend in both death metal and trash metal because you were there to combine these styles and people still keep arguing 40 years later, like who were the first one and all that stuff and you trying to be all humble and stuff. What is your take? Did you start the whole uh, death metal re revolution or the genre or are there something, some ones you were <laughs> credit to? I have the copyright 1983. We're, so that was the very first death metal band. That doesn't mean we created death metal. It just means we're the first. Because every band after that does their own shit, right? So, so yeah, we're just the first, man. I mean, and uh, I'm surprised somebody didn't think of it before, to be honest. Yeah, it's so obvious. I mean, it's like everything we're on the table, but you guys like, hey, why don't we just fucking build this rocket? Well, we're like, no trash metal, trash metal. Uh, and back then, you gotta realize, with, with very few exceptions, maybe Slayer, Creator, Sodom, uh, Destruction, um, Exodus, most um, thrash metal bands were, and with all due respect, were kind of bouncy, kind of hair bands, you know, like they, they, they would say, oh, we're so heavy, but they were never really heavy, you know, like. They were more like rocking. We're so evil, and there's nothing wrong with that, but that, that just isn't what, like blew our skirts up. Me and I happened to meet my trailer at a very pivotal moment in our life and we were just like, fuck the world, fuck everything. And let's just fucking, you know, let's just make the heaviest, most satanic music in the world. And we're trash metal was taken, black metal was taken, speed metal was taken, fucking power metal was taken. Why not death metal, you know? I'm like, okay. So then I just we wrote, I wrote a song called Death Metal and that was it. But but it was more about the music and then the title, but the title seemed to outweigh the music and, and you, uh, I don't know. Yeah. These days, Possess getting a lot more recognition, but you know, we're not, we're not one of those famous bands. We're still underground. If you're the first, you're, you're really lucky to be recognized within your lifetime, so. How does it feel? I mean, you played uh, some of those old songs from the very early 80s today, and I was like, fuck, it's Exorcist being played, one of the most iconic songs, which I guess it helped along the way that Cannibal Corpse was already like, let's uh, throw the red carpet right there. But how does it feel to you to play those songs like 40 years later and give the new generation, the younger audience like, hey, this was how it was back in the days, now just with a little bit different lineup? So me, I'm an artist. I'm always going to do art. Like people are like, well, why don't you just quit? You know, I quit doing art. If you're an artist, you just keep making art. And then so, of course, um, it feels good to play my songs. I, I like my songs. I, I mean, that's why, you know, that's why we write the songs. That's why I write them is, is because I like playing this kind of music, you know, and yeah, if I probably wanted to be rich or whatever, I wouldn't be playing and possessed. You know? yeah, well, that <laughs> kind of a given in a way. I don't want everybody to like me. I just want the people who like me to like me. I don't know if that answers your question, but I love it. To be quite frank, I love playing my music. I, I love seeing the smiles. I like turning the frowns and, and the smiles and frowns and grimaces. And it, it's, it's just everything to me that, that, you know, you can sit in your room and fuck around on a guitar. And then all of a sudden it's out there in the world. It's always brilliant. It's like pulling a rabbit out of your hat and making something eloquent, eloquent and e evil, you know, out of thin air, you know. And it, to me, that's, it's like that, um, you know, like, have you ever taken like a hard math class, like, you know, like algebra or calculus or whatever? You're like, fuck, I don't get it. I don't get it. 
you go, aha, right? You, you get, get those, those aha moments. Yeah, yeah, I like those aha moments. And, and for me, that art is uh, that aha, you know, like, I go, this sucks, this sucks. It's, oh, yeah. Like, you just kind of uh, have to keep looking for the, the moments that really yeah, define it. Yeah, you have to pull it out of your, your, your chest. Like, um, like uh, you, 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 we all have demons, man. You just got to shove them in your cock and fucking put them into your art, you know? When you made your so-called comeback album, it felt like, felt like you never even were away. Uh, how hard was it to, you know, kind of uh, go back like between the the sure. moments when you were like not exactly the most active out there. Well, I mean, I got shot twice, so and then I was like, "Fuck, what am I gonna do? I'm in a wheelchair." And and uh, I remember my guitarist came over and he's like, "Yeah, I'm taking a band. I'm gonna sing." And I was like exhausted. I'm just in bed. And I got hopped up on all kinds of opiates. And I was like, "Oh, whatever, right?" Yeah. Even though I own the name, and you know, I never planned on it, but then. Uh, What was I saying? Once I started recovering, I said, what am I gonna do in a wheelchair? Oh, he said, um, you know, I'd ask you to front, but you're a cripple and people would just laugh at you, right? And that kind of irked me. I said, like, okay, go fuck yourself. And so I wanted to get strong in order to write. You, uh, when you get shot, it's a very low point in your life, you know? It, it's, uh, it's more than just feeling sorry for yourself. It's just a catastrophic injury leading to like a complete and utter mental collapse, you know? And so you can't write that way. So what I did is I, I found another path. I went to college and ended up meeting a beautiful girl there. We got married, had a couple of kids. And you know, college gave me that, that confidence back. It's like, if you're going through the desert and you don't have water, you're not thinking about writing and possession, you're thinking about water, you know? And so I just, uh, you know, giving that self confidence back with my water, you know? And, and then I was like, oh, I gotta come back, you know? So. How was it, you know, when, it, when of course, the, during the years, lineup changes went through, how hard or easy for that matter was it to convince people like, we can still do it and we can make new music and we can make it loud and people love it. Did you have to do a lot of convincing or was it just like an easy I, way all the way I down? I don't worry about what other people think. I'm going to keep making music. Like, like if, if it, I don't care if there's one or three people. As long as there's somebody in front of me, I'm going to be playing music. So. But I mean more like the... the, the band members are doing with it like uh, no. is it hard to like you know get those guys like okay we're gonna do it and we're gonna fucking nail it it's because hard to get the right guys definitely but there's a lot of people that are possessed you know it's a kind of a, a cult following you know and so you know, that's not the hard part the hard part is to find somebody it's like a marriage you know it's like being married to four ugly women mm -hmm. like to, to get like like the people that you can collaborate with who are not like show offs or, or simpatico, you know, like, um, that's more difficult. And here we are, here I'm 25 members later, you know, and got a new drummer, Chris is so good. Like, oh my God, my new drummer. For the first time in my life, I feel like I'm in the pocket, like when we're rocking out, like before it's just ta 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 Now I feel like, oh man, like it like opened up, like, I don't know if you heard tonight, but like you start rocking, like, like um, in a metal way, like it feels better, like just to have somebody that's got that finesse and not that hooray for me and fuck you attitude, you know? I mean, there's a certain kind of a really, really great energy coming from you when, I, I mean, I saw you stage on stage a few years ago in Wacken, probably more than 10 years by now, but anyway, and now so many years later, seeing your gay on a stage feels like, like there's no uh, years between, like as if things are like, you know, very very consistent path and you're having good time you have the energy and the audience seems to love it well you're fucking smiling it's not like oh, okay this is fucking like nobody keeps up but you have the energy where does it come from i mean i didn't grow up rich i didn't grow up well i grew up pretty poor i know what it is not to have food or when i grew up like you could like you join a gang You join, um, you could work for the steel mill, but they went on strike and closed down. That since you go work for Chevron oil refinery, uh, you could um, you could join the army. Did I say that? Um, and if not that, or you could go to college, which was, was super far fetched. So like uh, you know, I ended up with Larry Lond, you know, from Primus and Early Possessed. I'm like, hey, it started, man. Like, I just saw him walking down the street with a fucking strap case and long hair. Hey, play guitar? No shit. 
He was, hey, let's start a band. He's like, okay. And so we were like 11 years old, it was like 1979. And then I just kind of stuck on that. Like everybody's like, you should focus on something else in case the band doesn't work. And I'm like, fuck that, man. It's all fucking Marauder. It's all Blizzard, right? So I've always been like, like I felt like um, the thing I relate to most is my way out from all that and into all this is music and and it's hard to define, you know, in words, but it's something that a person like me it was born hard. Like, uh, it, it's fucking metal. Like, you, there's just no other option. You know what I mean? Because I, I always just wanted to be like a rock star or just make people happy and play on stage. Even our first fucking gig, like we played a cake party. I was like, yeah, we're like little kids, right? My bass was like this big. And they were all rocking out. I was like, this is it. This is the end all, end all and be all of everything for me. It's like, I don't want to fucking do anything else. I don't care about anything else. And you just sacrifice everything for that. But it feels like you sacrifice nothing. It feels like a game, you know? Is there a certain band that gave you the idea like, fuck, I'm going to be an entertainer. I'm going to be a musician. I'm going to play metal. You know, I wish I could say that. You know, I sound arrogant, but the, the, the only people that really influence me are the musicians around me, you know? You know, because I'm rocking out, like, I, I'm making music, like, I'm not really concerned with what the other motherfuckers doing, like, I'm trying to make my own shit, you know? And uh, I'm going to make it original, and, like, it's fun to listen to other music, you know? Like, it, I always listen, like, I do love other music, I just, I don't let it affect me, I just, I like hanging out with the people I hang out I like getting in a pocket, rocking out, making music, and that's pretty fucking simple, you know. Comparing nowadays to back in, say, 70s or early 80s, how different, in your opinion, the world of metal is? It's definitely a lot bigger. Because uh, remember when we were blowing up, Metallica wasn't famous, Slayer wasn't famous, uh, nobody was really famous, none of us, like, And so we were just friends, you know, Exodus, and Slayer, Megadeth, uh, fucking, uh, oh my God, so many bands, Testament, or uh, Forbidden, like Mordred, like uh, Illusion, uh, uh, Outrage, a lot of these bands that, you know, Kirk Hammett lived right around the corner from me. I just ride my skateboard to his house and shit. Okay. And so, What was the question again? Was, uh, I was more like thinking like how different it feels like, of course, uh, as, as older person, but also how the times have changed. It, it feels scene. like the kids are pretty much doing the same fucking shit today. Like just living metal and yeah, you know, fuck the world. And yeah, I, the kids are very fucking metal today. And it's definitely much larger. Nobody was famous that we weren't doing huge crowds. And you know, and metal's the same. We're still not doing huge crowds. And uh, who gives a fuck, man? This is quite a metal, you know? Exactly. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lifestyle. It's a dedication. Yeah. Now, coming to that, uh, I, I see I'm here because not exactly any 20s in my, myself anymore, <laughs> but I see, still see uh, some people thinking like, like 80s or even early 90s were somehow more magical when it comes to uh, metal music, like how the stages were different, the venues were different, the audience were different. A lot of people seem to like, uh, kind of like getting the, the fake nostalgic about how things were, even though the bands weren't a big or just because of it. Uh, oh, do you think there is a reason yeah. reason to uh, think like that? Or uh, Absolutely, are... absolutely. Well, what is behind us is comfortable. It's like comfort food, right? We know what happens there. What's in front of us is scary, right? And so, yeah, it's, it's nice to be retro. It's nice for the kids to say, oh, this is how it was. I, uh, whether, but, but, but I think that whether you're retro or, or progressive, like, The scene is the scene. You're just turned on by what you're turned on. Some people are turned on by Hendrix. Some people are turned on by Randy Rhodes. And, and we just pick the musicians that we like to listen to. And sometimes that leads to a sense of nostalgia, I guess, you know. Now, since you've been in the metal scene for eternity, or at least half an eternity, and of course you get to listen to a million of different bands because you've toured and I guess a lot of labels and bands want to like push them your own stuff. Has there, have there been moments when you really feel like, okay, this is something really special, like oh, this yeah, is, should time. be getting recognized. Are there moments or even certain bands you would say like, these are oh, the definitely, definitely. 
I mean, there's a lot of kids playing death metal to not who the fuck I am, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. It's fine. Like, I, I would rather never to exist than death metal to not be a genre. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'd rather just be blotted out, right? Because, uh, I mean, this genre means everything to us. But there's a lot of bands that stick to the death metal nomenclature. nomenclature. We don't hyphenate it because back when I, we, I made death metal, the, the magazines didn't like that because they didn't invent that, right? They can't sell it. They can't market it. They don't own it, right? And I love that, too. But, but, uh, but so they would say, oh, that's not death metal. There's no such thing as death metal. <laughs> like, and they were, you know, in the PMRC is like pulling our shell, fucking calling it Satanism. And, but let me, let me stay on track here. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot. Look at the whole fucking Ohio scene, right? And a lot of, a lot of kids, they think that like, death metal is just their local haunts, right? Like, oh, I live in Florida, therefore death metal is, you know, white guys in, in shorts and doing the swir European swirl, fucking blast beats, zombies and guts, zombies and guts, right? Which is great. I love that shit, right? But then, you know, once you start traveling, you see like your bands like the, the Asian, suffocation, and Cantation, and Malaysian, and the whole New York vibe, right? You're like, oh, fuck, death metal is much more than one thing, right? And as you travel more, you see the whole like fucking European, Finland, fucking Sweden, fucking, you'll see folk death metal, you'll see. I just like, I know I'm drifting here, but I like people to stick to the death metal and make death metal like don't gatekeep and make it a bigger, more Audric tentacles type thing because that's the only thing way that death metal will ever survive. But like you look at the Ohio scene, like I was saying, the Ohio is like the new fucking Florida. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, straight up with that big brassy fucking snare and and yeah, when I was doing my radio show and, and all the time, I'm always like surfing the edge, looking for like something that's great, you know. And, and I see that all the time. There are sparks of genius all over the world, you know. And that's my own. I think that right now is uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's probably the most exciting time. And Death Metal's history is like uh, the golden age of jazz. Uh, like, sure. It's just spreading in so many different directions. And to the trained person, you know, you can see it. You can see it growing and just just roiling and becoming something monstrous. And I fucking love that shit. And that's happening everywhere. Like, And I think that's great. You know? Now, one thing I need to ask you, because like I said, you're, you're a veteran and you've been in the scene for a fucking eternity, is... I, I noticed that certain, not only so certain countries, but even certain uh, states or c certain cities have more uh, focus when it comes to certain stars. Like everybody knows Florida scene, and a lot of people, of course, know everybody knows uh, Swedish, um, Stockholm scene, and all that stuff. But even if we take a look at the United States or Europe, it seems like death metal has always been more like focused in certain small areas. And uh, I never figured out why, but you could probably tell us why Florida became the, uh, the nest, uh, the home, origin, or whatever for uh, oh, yeah. death metal. Yeah. Oh, wrong second. And Clive, do you have a light? I sure do, I can tell you why Florida doesn't sing about Satan, because it's a fucking Bible belt, you know what I mean? Even in California, which is the most liberal fucking mecca in the world, singing about the devil in the middle of the satanic panic, could be real fucking dangerous, right? You see, in Florida, there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. Like, you just get yeah. fucked. Except for Glenn Benton, he didn't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> that's why I love doing. But it is dangerous, and it's still dangerous. I still get death threats. But I think that, um, why is it in small pockets? I see it in cities. I see it in Frisco. I see it in Berkeley. I see it in Oakland. I see it. Like a Necro, they're fucking oh so fat. Like such a great band. Like three piece, come on, man. That shit is fucking wicked. Like, you know, um, I don't know if it's small cities. I think maybe you're from here, right? Yep. Everything's well, I'm from small. Finland, but everything's small, but it's everywhere. It's in small cities. It's it's like like I'm telling you, death metal is fucking blowing up right now, man. It's obvious. It's, It's just spreading like a fucking plague, man. It's and that's like, a good thing, obviously. Fuck yeah, like, fuck yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, 
I rock out and you can fucking listen to death metal. Like, I have a snack when you can have a meal. I have a hamburger when you can have steak and shit. Like, death metal is the best fucking music on the face of the planet. Why it is the best? A checking beer moment? Why? Yeah. Why is it the best? Because it's fucking obvious. I mean, to people like me, it's like, you know, just a fucking kiss. Like, it's about fucking politics and shit or you know, it's like some rock fucking asshole who's got so much money that fucking they don't know what time it is and shit like that's not as raw it's like fucking it's tactile it's like you can taste it you can feel it you can feel like everything that comes out of like the, from the young minds the old minds it, it's just fucking so real you can almost just a smoking. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, too. All right. Uh, I'm trying to take two more hits, but... It's okay. I can, I can, I can smoke afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. It's not me. It's the law. Oh, that's yeah. right. We're now. Yeah. This is the Norwegian law moment we have here, but... Yeah. Oh, yeah. The law sucks. Uh, I, I, oh, no, it's all right. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. My bad. I'm from California. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, I was buying it. Did I tell you I was buying that um, cider, right? Yeah. Uh, and he was giving me a look at it, and I gave it to my friend and assistant, Razor. And Razor's like, okay, Psh, opens it with his eye. Yeah. He's like, no, 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 you can't open the cider, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of, a, kind of a good segue. And he's like, I, okay, it's not all the way open. And he's like, oh, no, it's against the law. And I'm like, what is that? Like, to me, it feels like cuffs, right? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but I guess if you grow used to something, you just don't fight it. And maybe because the quality of life here is really nice, you know? Yeah. But uh, to me, I'd rather be shot full of holes and free, you know? You know, like the, um, what the fucking state it is in the United States, live free or die. Exactly. I mean, it, that only works in the United States, though. Yeah. Like, you don't want to fucking spread guns everywhere, right? Oh, like, well, yeah. yeah. No. But, hell, you know, it's like, you know, we're a new country. We just had a civil war a few hundred years ago. And, you know, you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. You know? Oh, well, that's we kind of some fucking crazy presidents. And I, I, I don't do politics, really, because I don't watch TV and I don't know much about that. I, I'm just a metalhead. But I, 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 I don't know. It, it's... I don't mind that he said that at all, but it, I, don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying, like, uh, death metal definitely breaks the rules, yeah. Yeah, it breaks the rules, yeah. Now, history metal has been expanding in various ways throughout the decades. I mean, since the birth of heavy metal in general, obviously, we had trash and death and black metal, and people still probably fight over which one is the most extreme, and it has been spreading to different kind of high notes acts. Is there a line? Weird take on it, though. Mm -hmm. like, like people should listen to the album and, and say, well, "Did I enjoy that or not?" You know? Yeah, yeah. They should say, "Well, um, you know, this one competes with this one or that one." Like they're all offerings. Like they're all gifts from pure artists, and I'd rather they just say thank you. You know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> it, it's not exclusive. Yeah. Like, so, well, you listen to that, you cannot listen to that. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, like, like make was such a big fuss out of it. Like that whole. The possessed or death thing, that's good for fanfare, but me and Chuck are friends. I, you, it's perfectly fine to listen to possessed and death. You're not forsaking my good friend Chuck's memory by liking possessed. And I'm sure if Chuck was here, he would say that he loves possessed too, because he, he surely did. We, we, we were fucking close. We were, he was a good guy, you know. Like, yeah. There was never any like sense of competition. You know? yeah. It was like a kind of a brotherhood. I, I think that is something like like a lot of people outside of mm -hmm. want want to think like that because it's seen happening in a various scenes as well. And when people kind of like get a little bit of peek inside or get to know the people and like, oh, so you're actually friends. You're not like enemies. Like what the hell? Yeah. How did I kind of misunderstand it? You cannot be an asshole in the music industry yeah. and expect to go anywhere. You have to have business savvy. You have to have a, a little political, political nuances. You have to have uh, a little je ne sais quoi. You have to, you, you can't be a fucking, you, you literally can't fake being a good person yeah. and get to anywhere. Like, you, well, if yeah. you're a rotten fuck, man, there's people like me would just toss you out. Like, it, it's, it's fucking ruthless. It's a boys club. You know? Well, that's uh, true. 
Yeah, you know how boys are. <laughs> exactly. No, talking of business a little bit, how do you think labels have changed over the years? Because like I said, back in the days, metal was like, go play with your apples and suddenly like, hey, let's make business out of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Has it become a toxic environment or is, is it a bigger in a good sense? Uh, you don't know, want contract to negotiate. You know? So it all comes down to individual contracts. Yeah, of course. I like, don't mind going... Uh, well, okay, well, a lot of kids, they think, you know, in order to get famous, you know, I want to be like Jeff or whatever, I'll get like an, an, an exclusive agent, I'll get an exclusive tour agency, I'll get an exclusive contract on a, a said record company. Uh, that's not necessarily, I'll give away my publishing. Like, that's not necessarily the best way because because you actually need money to finance the journey, right? Mm -hmm. And nobody's just going to be like, oh, man, your band's great, here's some fucking money, right? You have to, like, you fucking negotiate that with, like, impunity, right? And my advice to kids today is hold on to your publishing until it's worth, like, a mint, you know what I mean? Like, you don't need to get a manager. Your manager's going to grift fucking everything you have. Like, I never met a manager that doesn't fucking rob you blind, right? Yeah. And that's true. Like, that's part of their job line. Yeah. Well, it's just too tempting. People get weird around money. Like, you know, some people, they get money. They go, oh, well, I deserve this and I deserve yeah, that. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> I, I just got to be clear cut. Like, uh, uh, if you want to be on a label and you think that's going to progress you, that's fine. But, like, the, the best way to progress yourself is just play fucking clubs until you get a following. And then you have more added value, right? And if you're not good, sorry, man, like, fucking you didn't make it, right? Yeah. But if you have more and more fans out there, then you're fucking good, right? If if you if you don't have enough fans, adjust accordingly. If you're that sure of yourself, slap your members out. Do whatever it fucking takes to put fucking butts in the seats. You know what I mean? What well, about well, uh, the bands? I mean, I've seen it. Especially lately, like world getting more digital and all that stuff. They're like, okay, I'm not just gonna find a suitable label. I put everything on online and don't bother with the gigs because it's more, you know, comfortable being on your own couch or maybe bedroom and tap your instrument into your, uh, you know, laptop. And this is how the band life is. Uh, uh, what do you think about that? Uh, it's like um, when COVID hit, like. Um uh, well, I won't use my family, but kids were going to college on their laptop, right? And it kind of defeats the entire purpose because when, when you're young and you go to college, it's to learn how to socialize, you know, like, and how to navigate life, right? You're like missing a big layer. You are, but there are also like a lot of these um, SoundCloud kids blowing the fuck up too, like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. they're just making quick millions and then just disappearing, right? Yeah. If that's your goal, go for it, you know, but the only way you can legitimately have a, a rock and roll lifestyle where you can play all the time, and I'm telling you, touring is not easy. Like, touring is a uh, fucking... Yeah. So most people, they fucking hate it. It's the worst nightmare. To me, I love it. Like, I fucking love it. Like, I just want to tour until I fucking die. You know what I mean? Will you die on your boots on? Exactly, exactly. But it, it just depends on whether you're fucking metal or not. Like, um, I don't know. This might sound really arrogant. But it's, it's fine. Let's but bands like me, like, are fucking hard. Like, we're fucking hard. Like... We were fucking born, like, just eating fucking iron, right? And our life has never been easy. We're, we're, this is where, like, the definition of the metal comes from. Like, when people say, I'm fucking metal, right? That's what they mean. They mean I'm fucking hard as fuck, you know? Don't fuck with me. I'm fucking metal, you know what I mean? I think you're a living proof. I mean, a lot of people would have given up. Like, okay, you're in a wheelchair and you're not bitching about it. You had like not exactly the best condition uh, with the sick and die and all that stuff. You know, a lot of people would be like, okay, I'm not going to do it because I'm not a pretty boy any anymore in the stage and all that stuff. But you just keep rolling and the others keep pitching. What's your secret? I, I like metal. I like playing. I like, I see, I like making people happy. You know, it's, it's trippy. It's, it's, it's naive as that sounds. I just like making art. I like people to appreciate art. 
Mostly, I just want to make people fucking happy. Yeah. So it's about happiness in the end. It is. It's always been about happiness. Isn't that a little bit of a paradox considering, okay, we're doing death metal. This is brutal. This is about death, torture, guts out and all that stuff, blood. But it's also about making people happy. Christianity does not make you up. Hey, Tomas. Uh, before we before we wrap up things and let you go with Sorry, the yeah. beer and all that stuff, no be no need to be um, um, smoking and drinking. What do you think is happening with possessed? With say, let's play a four telling game in the top five ten years. I I honestly think in five years I'll be dead. That's your uh, yeah, but uh, estimate. If not, I'll still be playing. Yeah. yeah. Wrong. I definitely have to recover from these stories. Uh, like that shit is fucking that you get beat up and you have to like, recover and you go back out. But as long as I can fucking play, I'm gonna play. So well, well, you mentioned family. How does your family react to you know touring and well, this <laughs> mortal uh, estimation? Well, I mean, my uh, my daughter just wrote me a card. She's like, "Thank you, Daddy, for all your sacrifices, and you're literally the coolest daddy that." I ever lived and you're the best father and I was like, and I was like baby I, I haven't sacrificed anything I this shit has been like oh like I don't even listen at all like it's my fucking daughter right like so so yeah man like um yeah I mean much of what I do is for my family you know what I mean like uh, so yeah I, I pretty much everything I do is for my family so that's very yeah. fucking sweet man yeah Now, this is something I guess uh, a lot of uh, wannabe cool guys or gals should learn about these kind of uh, words. Now, if I can pick you, your mind for one more question, oh, yeah, and this I, I promise to be the last one. I, if, I, if, if you could give uh, one absolute best tip by Jeff to people like, okay, I'm gonna start a band, I'm just like doing with my instrument the best music I can and with this legendary man's words you what what would be a tip we about music you said already quite a bit of good information and good ideas but if there would be like one rule to you know rule them all uh, what would you say about about making metal? Band? about metal yeah if you feel like giving up you probably should but if you never feel like giving up Keep on going. Yeah. That's fucking great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, guys. This is Possessed, and I hope to get some of your questions answered. We, we did a lot of rambling and all that stuff, but that's the beauty of it. And of course, you can say. And if you already know the music, which you probably should, and if you don't, do your homework. Uh, start with the seven churches, man, and let it go deep into your soul. And, Try finally understanding what's so great about death metal, some of the best metal or music in the world. This is Jeff, this is Possessed, this is Arralda, and this is Beyond the Gates. Arralda. Bergen, Norway, Bergen. I beat you. Good night or good day, whatever yes. you're having, and Possessed. stay death metal. Peace.